Hello, and welcome to the GMI Hub Online. Oh, we've got a great show ahead of you. Today, we're going to be doing an incredible conversation about what we were thinking about that the future might hold for church ministries. And, you know, it's, it's a question that we all are dealing with, those of us who are in ministry, because of this COVID situation. So we have Jeremiah and Karen here, and I'll let our lovely Cheryl Duick introduce them better than I can. Anyways, my name is Dale Borland. Hi, I know Cheryl Duick. Thank you for introducing me, Dale. Um, yes, we have two great panelists here that you're going to want to hear from. Um, first, I'm going to go all the way to Alberta with Jeremiah Rabel. He is, uh, right now, he is a, 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 church, a, a church effectiveness coach or ministry effectiveness coach coach out in out in the Alberta Northwest Territories area. He has a background, 20 years actually, background in creative arts uh, ministries with uh, being a being a producer of creative creative works within different churches both in Ontario and in out west. And we are so thrilled. I love his passion for churches. Welcome Jeremiah. So glad you can be here. Hey, thanks so much for having me here. Appreciate it. And without, with, with, uh, with him is also Karen Burke, who many of you may know as the choir director for the Juno Award winning Toronto Mass Choir, who just, just produced a, and released a Christmas, uh, no, not a Christmas one yet, but just released a new song out. So you got to check that out. Um, but she is also a York University professor, very integral in creating the very first uh, curriculum for gospel music at York University. She is uh, a researcher. She is a, um, an award winner. She's re received the Harry Jerome Award, which for recognizing her stint, her long faithful stint in creative arts and music. We are so thankful that she didn't take the time now out of all her recording to come be with us. Thank you, Karen Burke, and welcome. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Really, really wonderful to be with you all. I'm so glad that you're here too, Karen. Um, so this conversation is going to be interesting. First, I want to get a perspective on, on the pulse of what's happening um, just before COVID kind of hit and we had to separate from our church buildings. Um, the worship um, in your church as far as choir or worship leadership, what was it kind of uh, typically, what was that typically like? So we get some perspective of where we're going. Well, for me, our, my, my husband and I started attending a new fellowship um, back about a year ago, about just over a year ago at Kingdom House Christian Center. And I was always in love with the music there because so many of the people there our former TMC members. And so it, it was great to see them carrying on the tradition and working in the church. And I was happily uh, aware that they didn't need me, which was great. So I could come and I could be blessed and only had to, you know, step a toe in every once in a while. Um, I've, I've come to my, to, at this point in my life where I don't want to, to do what I know I, I can help others to do. So, I would help people to do this. I will coach people, but I'm not going to just step in and do it. Um, there's so many people that have the ability and the need to have coaching. And so that's my role in the church really is just to be an encourager, supporter. But they have a very active um, uh, ministry and so many talented worship leaders. I mean, we're very, very blessed in that church. Um, and the, the, the team is strong in terms of musicians. And so... Um, they were, you know, basically doing some live things every week. And then, of course, this COVID hit and we're all at home. Um, but they they have been dealing, um, as other churches have, with different restrictions, number of people in the building. They've been making those adaptations all the way along. And they've also been experimenting, as other churches have, with the different ways of presenting service and producing the music, you know, going from recording everything to doing tracks you know it's been it's been it's nice now like i think they've got into a, a groove now and just now as we're getting into a groove now now we have to go back so it's mm. interesting to see but i love the fact that they're they've been rolling with it and i'm getting great support from their leadership yeah i think we're going to unpack that as we um have a more of a conversation so jeremy what about you yeah i mean pre-covid i mean worship is central to church life, uh, music is is a real key part 
of making church happen. And so the churches that I work with, I mean, that was, that's a major thing is to find somebody that and find a team of people that can lead. And, you know, when we're working with some church planters, that's a, that's a key component. I mean, basically when I look at church, it's uh, the preaching, the communication, uh, and uh, the worship, and then children's ministry. Those are kind of the big three for me. There's others around there, but okay. as far as the Sunday morning component is concerned, those are those are three key areas. And so we've seen, uh, yes, worship and, and music be a central component. For some churches, it's uh, it's you know 15 minutes. For others, it's 40. But it's it's basically that 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 main thing that that was happening. And um, to lose that, and again, I know we'll talk about that, but to lose that kind of connectivity in singing together uh, was a real big loss for many, many people. And then even when they announced the return, um, at least here in Alberta, but they, they, they uh, restricted singing, corporate singing and, and uh, in choirs and things like that. And that, that it's still have been a real hard thing for people to get their ha head around because a worship ministry, music ministry in a church is, is so central um, to what happens there uh, in, in that gathering, whether it's a Sunday morning gathering, whether, whether it's a prayer gathering, but it's very, very central, very, very important. And those that lead worship, those that serve in the music ministry are absolutely vital, vital, vital to the work of the ministry in the local church. Absolutely, because the complimentary ministry to the pastor and to all the staff and a lot of people make an evaluation on a church based on that when they walk in. That's the first thing they think of. Oh, I don't like that. Or, oh, I like this. You know, so very true. Now, Jeremiah, um, you gave me the privilege of reading one of your articles about what COVID is actually teaching churches right now. Can you elaborate that on that a little bit? Yeah, and if, if we have the link, maybe we can post it in, in the notes here. But I mean, we... <laughs> Since uh, since we've um, been no longer able to gather, um, you know, I think it was mid March when they kind of went down, at least here in Alberta. Um, I think the church realized that our mission was never to gather. Like the whole point of church, Jesus didn't say, you know, um, go. You know, he didn't go and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, have a place for you to gather at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning at such and such a place. You know, the great, the great. Uh, commission was about going and making disciples and what we've done I think over over uh, many 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 years maybe hundreds of years is taken that central gathering that method of gathering and made that the mission and we've poured lots of resources churches spend lots and lots of money on uh, on that Sunday morning and uh, and so <laughs> I mean 60 to 80 percent of our resources go into that gathering and now we haven't been able to gather. Does that is that the end of the church? No, it's not, right? I mean, we have seen the church explode beyond that. We've seen we've seen the church break the internet. I mean, that first Easter Sunday, the, the week before, and then Easter Sunday. I mean, there was there were reports out of the states and the church online platform basically saying the church broke the internet. Why? Because we we went where people are and we realized, wait a second, this whole point of church is not just to have a Sunday morning experience, dance in the Holy Ghost and then go home and have pot roast. That's yeah. not what it's about. That's right. Uh, Jesus created the church uh, to mobilize people to get on mission. He did not create the church for Christians. He didn't create a gathering uh, spot. And so yeah, in, in these past few months, the churches are realizing, wait a second, the mission was never just to have a service. And then and then I've done my job for seven, for six days and I'll come back. Uh, they're learning that they're learning that they have to actually connect with people. They actually have to call their people up. Do you remember phone trees? <laughs> my, my mom, my mom had a, like a phone tree. It was typewritten out by the rotary phone. You know, the rotary phones. Okay. And, and when we all went to COVID, I got this idea of that in my mind. And I said, hey, let's do this. And people thought it was a new idea. They were like, this is amazing, Jeremiah. I was like, no, this is like, this is from the 80s, man. Yeah, yeah. And they got on the phone and they said, phoning people. And people would say, I haven't gotten a phone call from my pastor or my ministry leader ever. Mm. Well, come on. Mm. Right? The church is about connecting. So we, we've seen that. We've seen innovation like never before. We've seen creativity come out. You know, I got, I've got i seen pastors preaching from couches. I've seen pra pastors, you know, preaching in their blue jeans. I've seen, I've seen pastors preaching outside. I've seen creativity like I've never seen before, uh, as opposed to a lecture for a 40-minute lecture on Sunday. I've seen, 
you know, kids involved in service and, and different people. I had one pastor doing, a, he had a section where everyone took pictures of their garden and showed the progress of their garden. And then he preached about growth. And I just was like, and I mean, this is a church of 20 people. And I'm just, I'm just amazed you know, at, at the innovation and the creativity, mm -hmm. all for connectivity. We've seen pastors reach out. Like in those first few weeks, man, they were out there delivering groceries. Church members were mobilizing. They did this thing in, in a couple of churches called Chock-A-Block, where they just wrote positive messages of hope all across their church property, all across blocks and blocks. They put signs in their windows, you know, there is hope. We'll get through this. And this was the church unleashed out in about speaking hope and love and peace in the midst of a pandemic and guess what people were watching and they still are and in, in our province we've seen people come to christ we've seen people make decisions to follow jesus or come back to church and we've heard story upon story across the churches in our region where people who haven't been to church ever or you know they, they checked it out online they engaged they clicked, you know, the little prayer icon when the pastor said, hey, if you've accepted Christ, put that. They did that. They joined an alpha online, and now they're a part of the church, and they haven't even yet set foot in the church yet. But they're a part of the family of God all through the power of pixels and the Internet. Man, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. It only takes a little thing <laughs> to make a big difference. And that is, that is awesome. Karen, what have you been seeing on your end, especially with music ministries and churches and, and so Well, forth? I know one of the things that has been uh, really interesting for, I think, people who are in church ministry and also choirs like the Toronto Mass Choir who have um, the, you know, the sort of parachurch relationship where we're running in partnership with church ministries and and so many of our members are involved in church ministry and then are are sort of traveling back and forth or at least using the things that they've learned through us in their own church ministries but it's a it's a it's a new way of thinking about the point of music ministry and i know that for so much of the of what's been happening um, and i certainly echo what jeremiah was saying about the amount of resources that are spent um in that in service and it's, a lot of it has to do also with what's happening in the worship. And sometimes people would, I, I'm not going to say sometimes, a lot of the time, we get very enamored of the bells and whistles and all of the, the, the things that we can do to, you know, add to whatever is happening, whether it's lights or new PowerPoint or, you know, there was, it's minutia to the, to the yep. nth degree. And, and so much of what we do in church is production as opposed to reproduction and and i'm really a teacher at heart and i'm always encouraging those that i know that are involved in music ministry leadership to think about reproduction and trying to help those people especially young people but those that are that have that passion of to learn to once again make our our houses of worship places where people can grow and be developed in their gifts and be able to then, you know, be encouraged to go and use that um, in, the, in the, the broader world. And that's basically where we get our TMC members from, or people that are, you know, definitely involved in their church and church ministry, but are looking for other places to, um, to broaden what they're doing. And so if, if we could see this time as a time for us to take a step back from just, uh, focusing on that hour and really thinking about what's the place of music in ministry and not just in my church on, on a Sunday morning. And I, I really believe that if, if, if we can use this time, almost like a retreat, you know what I mean? To really dig into those roots and mandates and intentionality, um, I think it, it can only be a good thing for us. That is so good. I love what you said about that. We've used, used music to be a place of production as opposed to reproduction. I love that phrase. Can I steal that one? I love that phrase. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I just is, thought about it, but I just said, yes, you can take it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll, I'll give you credit. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. You know, because it is so true. Like, and I, I'm, I'm actually curious because like, Obviously, with COVID coming in 
most, if not all churches have had to go to an online format. And, you know, we've watched some churches and some churches have, if I can say, aced it in the sense of they know how to put something on that attracts people, that draws them in, that people can relate to. And then there are others that not so much, it mm -hmm. seems. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, some people may say that those production, those uh, online services either can make or break a church. Have you ever seen those kind of examples? Or do you feel that even if a church is not making it so well, they're still in the right direction? <laughs> there's there's power in corporate worship. There, there's just something that happens when we gather physically, when we sing together. And that is not uh, reproducible online. It's just not. I mean, I, I go to church every Sunday in my living room, and I like to sing out and whatever. But it it's just not the same. And I think we need to understand that, that we're, we, we've shifted. When we go online, we're actually doing something a little different than what we would do in a concert space. Or in, and it's the same thing. We know that, right? When we, when we take the choir into a concert and then we take the choir into a television studio, it's two different things. And so we've got to understand that. And so churches that, that are, you know, um, trying to recreate um, that connection and emotion that we do, right? Let's sing that again. Or let's, I would say there's, that's probably not the place for it in, in that context. I would say, you know, maybe, maybe do a worship night on a Wednesday with just, you know, a couple of people and just do a, a more of a smaller online broadcast. But when you're in that Sunday context, one or two songs with powerful lyrics. So what happened, what happens is when the lyrics start to take over now, because I can't necessarily sing with a bunch of people, but I can look at the lyrics what I would, what we suggest to churches is do one or two songs with powerful lyrics and maybe even put some imagery over top rather than just a pictures of you singing or video of you singing. And, and, and when you do that, now you can actually grab from, if you don't feel like you've got that quality, and there's a lot of people out there that are producing stuff that you can ask to have, and you can have guest worship leaders. I mean, I was in a church in Lloyd Minster that had Bethel Church guest worship lead for them, you know? They'd never be able to afford that, right? And here they can have that. They have that opportunity. Why not do it? Um, you know, so, so I think it's just time to get creative and remember that what we're trying to do on Sunday morning now um, is we can't so much create that environment uh, that's, you know, emotive and emotional. But what we can do is communicate profound truth and use visual imagery, right, to create that emotional connection. I mean, it's one thing when I, when I'm in a in a room and I'm seeing, you know, I'm 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 in the room, but it's another thing when I'm seeing imagery on a screen I'm, or whatever, and it's and it's bringing out emotion in me. Uh, that's a great opportunity for church creatives to begin to utilize this uh, this mode of communication. Absolutely, and I think it's essential because we're talking about the hermeneutic of community that needs to be cultivated. And we can do that through the creative means that we have. I just want to remind everybody who's watching, tuning in right now, we are having an incredible conversation about a music ministry and choir ministry and what the future may hold for that in the church. We've got some amazing panelists. We've got Jeremiah Babel and Karen Burke, and both of these individuals have been involved in church ministry for decades. So you've got an incredible amount of information that would be coming your way. And also to remind you that our previous interviews that we've had with other fantastic panelists are up on our website, the YouTube channel, uh, GMI Hub Online. And you can check out all the previous videos that are up there. We've got a library of stuff for the last few months, an incredible resource. We'd like you also to share the experience. Tell people about what you're seeing right now. If you love it or you know somebody who would love to hear this, let them know. Uh, post this on your Facebook, have fun with it, and let everybody know, share the experience. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dale. Um, okay, let's think about where church, what, what churches should be seeing. Like, we, we've seen that, um, that basically because of COVID, everything has stopped. Everyone's had to rethink about why, the why behind what they're doing. And like you said, Jeremiah, a lot of people may, or a lot of churches may have been trying to recreate the church experience that would normally be in the church building, in the, in the four walls, so to speak. But really, should that be their focus or should it be focusing on outside the walls now? Should there, 
I mean, you use the perfect example about using um, imagery and words that mean, that, that, that carry the meaning now, that are more deep. Whereas there was a time when meeting in person, it was more like keep the words simple so people can sing along. So, so there's one change I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hearing from you. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, again, you're not, you're not really engaging in corporate singing the way you would. And so why not take a, a maybe a wordier song or even what we would have called in, in the music industry a, a performance song and, uh, and utilize that in the context of your worship service to communicate um, something different or some emotion. Again, I mean, back in the day, we, we used to call them specials. Do you remember those specials, Karen? With the tape deck? <laughs> you know, I mean... Why not do something like that? Do something creative. The other day I saw one of our churches, they were out in a field. They had the band out there and they did it. They called it Church in the Wild. And they, they, they did something again. And what, what you're doing with that is you're just shifting people um, and you're putting them in that moment as they're watching. Remember, people are just able to watch only on, the, on their phone. And that, that's, how they're, that's how they're engaging this. And so you, you're not putting on a big spectacle here. You're, you're speaking, you're singing right to the camera. You're using uh, imagery. And so, yeah, I think as long as we're online, uh, we need to think of it that way. Okay, so now what's the new norm? What do you foresee being the new norm for churches, um, Jeremiah, and with Karen, what do you see the new norm being for music ministries and choirs? Is there a future for choirs in music ministry? I think one of the things that I've been encouraging, uh, you know, young young pastors and worship ministers is that if your teams and if you, if your church feels that somehow you can't have music ministry because you can't sing, then we are missing the whole point. And our teams, if are missing the whole point if they feel that they can no longer they have no use because they can't minister in an out in a public setting and so what i've been trying to work with my team and any and, and others that i'm working with is for them to use the time to re not reimagine but to to fully imagine what their ministry is about and that it has to have spiritual roots that are dug deep it has to go beyond the choice of music, the key of the music, you know, your, 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 your plan of which order you're going to sing in. It has to be more than that. And each person that's involved in the ministry, music ministry as well, has a responsibility. There's no, it shouldn't be a hierarchy of singers or performers. You know, so, so this kind of thinking um, is something that is, is, we can build upon. And especially during this time, when you take that outcome away, and you're dealing now with process and you're dealing with relationships and you're dealing with helping people to understand their their true role in what's happening in terms of music ministry it's taking things back scaling things back to the bare bones and that goes from everything from the fact that now we've taken out uh you know you can't have you know 12 people on stage and all this stuff going on it's now maybe a guitar and a keyboard <laughs> maybe it's it's nothing much else besides a key keyboard but wow do we really get back to the essence of who we are and how powerful is that even that visual how powerful is that and so for me it's an exciting time and i'm trying to look at what we can do as opposed to what we can't do that's awesome. Uh, a, a mentor of mine used to say the greatest thing about churches that were built in the 1900s out of wood is that they burn down every 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd have an opportunity to rebuild. And, yeah. and I think COVID has, you know, burned down the way that we do church, provided us an amazing opportunity to, to recreate, to restart, to do something new. And I, I just would encourage I would encourage music teams and 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 uh, and worship leaders who have feel like, well, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I've had a couple of people say, well, I've got nothing to do now. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Get get out get out of that context of the Sunday morning as being the only time to engage with the message of hope in your music. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, 
I mean, Karen, you know this. They, they, they people take music. They took music with them. The old, you know, the, the, those spirituals, right? They took them with them. They sang them at work. They sang them as they, and that's what music is. Music is not just to come on a Sunday morning between ten thirty and eleven fifteen and sing some songs. I mean, you carry that stuff with you. So take the message of hope and bring that to your community. You know, if you're a worship team, you're, you're a vocalist and you got a couple, you know, set up on a, in a cul-de-sac and do a block party, sing some songs, uh, go to a senior's home and set up and sing outside the senior's home and sing a message of hope. Uh, find places where you can take the music to the people. I mean, online, I mean, use TikTok, use Instagram, use Facebook. And just sing. There's something in my area called Corona, Corona-oki, corona Oki, like karaoke, but Corona. And people get on there. And I've, I've seen some worship leaders get on there and just sing a song of hope. And you yeah. see the comments come in, you know, I mean, there's Johnny Cash and there's all these other stuff. But then there's this, you know, message of hope and people are commenting. That was so uplifting. Thank you so much. And that's what that's what the music portion of of church really is. Yeah. I mean, we, we know it's not worship. Mm -hmm. That's not worship. Singing isn't worship. Living a life devoted to Christ, to Jesus, is worship. Right. You worship mm -hmm. with your money, your time. That's how you worship. You don't worship with a song and say, "That's we know that, right? We don't have to go back to Matt Redman, Heart of Worship, uh, song story from 1999 and figure that out. We know. So why are we thinking we've lost worship? We have not. I think you're right, Jeremiah. I think that's taking that time to, as you said, uh, I would say marinate in, in that. So you'll be, whenever you go, that's what comes out and people will see that. And we have opportunities as, as musicians that are sitting at home right now. Um, this is not a time for you to sit and wait. This is a time for you to write, sing, um, marinate in the ministry God has uh, called you to. Yeah, and 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 get out. Like, I mean, you you can reach. There's, I mean, there's like 4.4 billion people every day on the internet. And the, the the last one, the last stat that came out in April was that these people spend six and a half hours on the internet a day. Mm -hmm. Like, what what are they doing? And what are they looking at? Well, maybe they're looking at your music. Maybe they're looking at your TikTok. Maybe they're looking at something that you did, uh, just with your piano and guitar and just sing, singing out into the into the camera. Well, if you can bring that message of hope and love and peace, I mean, why not do it? Well, you're inspiring me, Jeremiah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I'm excited about the, I think, the creativity that will come out of this period as well. I can hardly wait for the explosion of songs that's going to come out of this. As people have been forced to dig deep, be quiet, be separate. Wow. I mean, this is exciting to me, you know. And, you know, all of us with our busy lives, it's not just having time. It's having headspace to be able to, to really, you know, allow the Lord to speak to you and to drop those nuggets. And so I'm very much looking forward to what, how the Lord will lead and, and the things that will be birthed during this period. You know, there, there's an old Andre Crouch song that says, Jesus is the answer <laughs> for the world today. And, and my, fr my friends, that has not changed. And if you're carrying the message of hope, Jesus has made a difference in your life. If you truly believe that knowing Jesus is the best decision that anyone could ever make, if you truly believe that, by golly, get out and sing about it. Preach it. <laughs> You know, I share that excitement about the new creativity that's going to come forth. We're actually, even GMI Hub, we actually encourage artists to, to write some songs for a compilation project that we, we announced back in January. And there are some that have already, they've already done it. They've, they've started the music. They've, they've, some have recorded the music. And, and like I said, before we went on live, you know, I, I think that if people who have been, for example, songwriters, worship leaders, and they've, They've, they've been writing songs, but they've kind of stuck it under a pillow or in a book and kind of said, no one else needs to hear this. Now is the time when that music is going to come out. Now is the time to build on that because there are some, probably some beautiful treasures that you've been hiding that other people need to be hearing and seeing. So I, I share your excitement, Karen. I do. <laughs> I share your excitement. I, I, I sit there and I think as I was hearing the both of you, um, 
any encourage like you, you've said so much encouragement already so i feel like i'm just repeating the questions over and over again but if there are churches or say church leaders what would your message be to church leaders about this time um i know you've said take the time to restock but is there any other encouragement you would give church leaders in general about um, taking advantage of this time making the most of it i think that one of the things that i've seen i and then because of my my position where i happen to be purview it's like i'm 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 privy to a lot of churches what what they're doing and for those that i feel like that are being the most successful i'll use that word at the moment it's probably not inadequate during this time it's been with those uh church leaders pastors that are working in partnership with their musicians um, and when I say that, I mean things like when, when, when there's uncertainty like this, if there is a partnership in the terms of next steps and there is an understanding of what it will take in order to move to that next step, it, it, it brings the anxiety level down quite a bit and it helps people to feel like they're part of what's happening. Sometimes, I've heard of, sometimes musicians, they hear during the broadcast we're going to be going next week to three services and that's the first time that the musicians are hearing that right. do you know what i mean so I do. that i would suggest that this if there was ever a time to work at that relationship between the, the pastor and the musicians that this is a great uh crucible it's a great opportunity and it's going to help people to move from um from one stage to the next stage but also just moving um in general like hopefully past COVID, and in, in how we and how we navigate these relationships it's mm -hmm. so important and i'm like i love to hear about churches or sorry uh, seminaries for example that are also helping their church leaders to understand the mind of the musician and mm -hmm. what those responsibilities are and what that role can be in a church ministry so that there is that healthy um uh want to in terms of creating uh, a good stable relationship so so churches you've just been challenged okay pastors you need to reach out and communicate with your worship and music teams and be involved in what they're doing and let the there be like a, a unification right now as we move forward yeah i mean there's no doubt in my mind that uh leaders are tired you know mm. this this has been a real tough season and they've had to pivot and learn stuff and do stuff that you know they weren't trained in seminary to do. Um, they're figuring out technology. They're and they're I mean they're dealing with all sorts of stuff. You know, Pastor, how come you're not gathering? And Pastor, why are you wear, wanting us to wear masks? And Pastor, how come you're not speaking about race? And how come you? I mean, these last these last two months, it's just I, I being a leader at this time is is uh, is it is it tough? And I, I just want our pastors to, to know, those that are watching, that did you know that God knew this was coming? And, and he actually thought it was a really good idea to put you in charge. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you, you've been called and equipped for such a time as this. And that doesn't mean that you got to go crazy and try and figure stuff out. We got to take some time and we got to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me in this time? We really need to take time apart and 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 contemplate and reflect and drill down on your calling. Uh, what are you called? What you know? What's that holy discontent? What's that thing that ticks you off? Because uh, it's there. Drill down, and then who are you called to? Right? And all all that's happened is that vehicle to get from your calling to who you're called to has changed. Right? It used to be the Sunday morning service. It used to be your building. Now it's not anymore. Okay. So what do you need to learn about or what vehicle is going to help in this moment? So I would just challenge pastors. First of all, don't try and carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. We all know you're not super, super men or women. Um, but turn inward, turn to Christ, go back to that place where you were called. It's, there's something there for you. The Holy Spirit's got something there for you. And then get up and lead the best you can. Greg Rochelle says it best. Uh, that people would rather follow a leader who's real, not one who's always right. So be real and be honest. And if you don't know, 
the answer to a question, just say, I'm not really sure yet. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and just know that there are, are uh, Christians all across this nation who are praying for you, Pastor. They might not know your name. They might not know your county or your province or where you're from or what, where you are. But I know for a fact that there are people lifting up all of our churches all across our, our country because the church needs to rise up. The church needs to rise up and be the voice of hope in this dark, dark time. I get a good sense of your heart here, Jeremiah, and it's great because we talked a bit off, uh, off broadcast about what your organization does. And I see the heart right there about encouraging um, church growth through worship and ministry. And uh, it's great to see that. And uh, I just love it. <laughs> and just picking up that thread as well, um, I love that you felt, say that, you know, the Lord's not surprised by what's happening at all. And one of my good friends who's a, a choir director in Quebec, she left me with this nugget the other day and I said, just because we're surprised doesn't mean we're not prepared. And if we, if, we, if we know that the Lord is not surprised by this, then we also have to believe that he's prepared us for it. And so within our, our bodies, in terms of bodies of worship, our leadership, the people that we're working with are, are all the solutions that you will need. As we look to him, and that he has prepared each one of us, if he's placed us there, then he has prepared us for what we have to do. And I think a lot of us also are, we have high expectations of ourselves, of our teams, and we do have to give ourselves grace and everyone else, grace and space. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. That is great. That is so great. Um, I'm curious to find out what the new norm is going to be, but I want to just remind people, we are here with Karen Burke and Jeremiah Rabel, um, who are talking about church ministry, talking about choir, talking about music ministry, what it looks like now that we're in COVID, and probably what it could look like when COVID is done, <laughs> if it could be done. Um, and if you're in the, if you're with us right now, go ahead and share this. This is not a private conversation. Go ahead, share this with a friend. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat. We'd love to, we'd love to get some questions from you and what your thoughts are. And, and if you're enjoying this conversation, give us like a thumbs up or a hand clap or something in the chat. Go right ahead and do that. I'm, I'm wanting to drill down a little bit more and, and I do have a great question that has popped up for church leadership and what your feedback would be on this. But this is a time, like you said, to connect with, with people, like connect with your team. What about building a new team? What about reaching out and recruiting? Is this a good time for that? It would absolutely. <laughs> like yeah. never, never stop building, never stop growing, never stop recruiting. I mean, I mean, people that even like people that are, you know, that were doing one thing. Uh, in the church, you know, let's say they were usher leader number one. Well, at this point, you know, they're not able to do that right now. Okay, so shift their job description, you know, make them the, the person that calls everybody or or teach them how to edit or teach them how to, you know. And so I think it's a great opportunity for us not only to recruit, but also to cross train. Um, mm -hmm. We've got church, the churches that have been able to pivot, even their staff and say, okay, you, you know, you were the campus pastor at this school where we rented. Well, we can no longer rent that school, you know, so now you don't have a campus. So, you know, so now we're going to make you the small groups person. Oh, okay. And, and so they, you know, they just make, you make those shifts as you need to. And so I would say, absolutely. If you've got people that are, that are, you know, coming to the church and saying, well, boy, like I, I, I like to do this kind of stuff. I mean, connect them. The, the greatest discipleship tool that we have as a church is serving. It's service. And so we want to we want to have uh, we want to have people involved in serving because that's that's where they grow that's where they connect that's where uh, you know they're trained they, they uh, there's a lot that can happen when you take serving and you use it as a discipleship tool so I would be saying build that team grow that team uh, because the only way that we grow as churches is by growing leaders and by growing our teams. And how would they do that? How would they grow their lead or their teams? How would they recruit? at this time absolutely so i think it's I, I think it comes down to recognizing who's in your congregation 
And I mean, I've said this pre COVID, but standing up on the platform and saying the nursery needs workers is the worst way to recruit, you know, have conversations with people, have virtual coffees and ask, I always say, this is the main question to ask. What has God been saying to you these days? What has God been speaking to your heart? And when you do that, when, when, when they start talking, you start listening for those key words, right? Those key things that they start, well, I realize that, you know, seniors are really lonely. Okay. Pick up on that, write that down. Um, you know, for those who are brand new to your church, who have maybe come through online, it's about, you know, encouraging them in that, in that Sunday context, keep saying, Hey, you know, we're a church that serves together and connects together. And, you know, if you'd like to join one of our serve teams or, you know, uh, then, then here you go. And, and I mean, and they click on the link and they fill it out and then you follow up and you have the same conversation. So, you know, what, what do you like doing? And I mean, I've seen churches that have non-Christians that are a part of their community response team. They're out there, <laughs> you know, they're out there delivering groceries and picking up toilet paper and then giving them the card that says come to church on Sunday and they don't even go to the church. You know, I mean, one of the greatest things we've seen our churches do is basically change their website. How can we help? Do you want to help? Uh, and then, and then the live service time. But I mean, people want to serve, they want to help. So I would say, give people an opportunity to spread peace, hope, and love. Uh, and uh, like Paul says, you know, if they're, even if they're not preaching the gospel, the gospel still being preached. I mean, if they're not Christians, you know, they're, they're still preaching the gospel. You can still see, uh, see amazing things happen. So yeah, recruiting by connecting, recruiting by giving people an opportunity just by clicking a link and signing up and then following up, but always make it personal. And remember that the Holy Spirit is speaking to your people. He's already directing and you'll have someone say, Hey, we should do this. Okay. How can you help mobilize that to make that happen? I think it's very important, you know, picking up on that thread that it's not just filling positions to fill positions. And this is why I hesitated at the beginning, you know, it is relationship building. And, and when you're, when you, when you're intentional about that, then the, everything follows, you know, but if you're just kind of trying to go look for somebody to sweep the church, but I mean, if you're looking to actually build relationships, then those things will come. They will, they will, they will actually meet the need. And I believe the Lord knows what, what needs to be done. And he's put the people, as I said, in place that need to do that. But for most of the part, any of the jobs that um, I see, I know even in my life, it's because someone has come to me and tapped me on the shoulder that I think you could do that. And so that only comes from knowing your people. You know, the Toronto Mass Choir has 55 singers and we're, we're, I'm not able to see them directly, you know, but I do make a point of, of texting and just saying, hey, how are you doing? How can we help you? Um, what's, what's happening with you? Because so many things happen and, and it would just go by that you would affect how they're doing. And so it's important that you, you know, even in the sense of we're, we're not a church, but if we're not connected, then it, it, you know, the ministry cannot, cannot stand. And so I even know within the period of time that we've been apart, um, I've had one girl who's lost three members of her family. They passed away in the last five months. You know, I mean, you can't just, oh, well, Send, send a card saying, hey, hey, you know, I mean, it's important that we check in with people and they, they need to know that they can still connect. And so the recruitment piece is only going to be to me is, is sort of secondary to trying to stay connected with people in a relationship way. And, and that's what I love about what you were saying, Jeremiah, because if you're listening, if you're listening, then those things um, will come and you'll be able to understand how they can best be fulfilled and then the, the, the need to be ministry being at, at the same time. Is this the time that leadership should use um, to not fit the typical mode that they've been using? So in other words, um, if they've, they've always done things a certain way, but now that things have changed, going back to that certain way, is that... Is that the way, I don't know, it, it, should, they, should they continue the way they were going or is it time to embrace something, a new way of doing things? Um, yeah, well, there's two, types of, there's two types of leaders out there. there there's the ones that, that um, well, I shouldn't say there's three. <laughs> there's ones that are what we call early adopters. I mean, they're full in. Like they, 
they've left they've left the old ways behind they're innovating they're trying new things they're throwing mud against the wall seeing what sticks and i mean whatever news comes they're not going back ever and uh, and they're just charging ahead they're trying new things they're they're pivoting they're taking their staff and changing them i mean they're just going there's the other ones uh the other set of leaders are tolerating the pivot they're tolerating what's happening now and they've made their changes and they're making some changes, but they keep looking, they're longing for yesteryear. They're, they, you know, they want the thing to get open again and so that they can, you know, get back to the way it was. And, and maybe they'll, they'll do a bit of a hybrid. Um, you know, they'll stay online or they'll stay with some out, outbound stuff, but really what you're going to see is, is kind of the way, the way that it was. And then you're seeing leaders that, that um, really just have thrown their hands up and said, I, I, or, you know, They'll get someone else to do it, but as soon as this thing, you know, gets to normal, they're resigning. And I, I know we're seeing some resignations now. It's just because, because whether you want to go back or not, the landscape has shifted. I mean, I mean, I don't know about you, you guys out in Ontario, but now, Bert, I mean, we've got mandated masks now for for two of our cities, and I mean, it just everything is different. And so, I mean, if you're if you're if you're back there longing for another time to come back. I, I just would say, Hey, you like, you know, God is doing a new thing. Embrace what he's doing. And guess what? Like we've said before, you've been called for such a time as this. And if you don't have all the answers, that's okay. There are people, God's sending people around you that can help you. And uh, I, I know in our, in our, in our region, the churches that I work with, I work with about 130 churches. When, when we started this, only about 12 of our churches were online. And within 14 days, we had 128 churches online. Yeah. We just shifted like that. Yeah. And, and these leaders that I work with, you know, they're, they're laser focused on the mission. And they're not about even getting online or they're about reaching people. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we just saw that shift so quickly. Now, I mean, I, had to, I was doing tech support for, for 14 days. But man, you know, we, we saw that shift and I'm so proud of our leaders because they continue to embrace the new and, 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 and that's, that's really what it's about. Behold, I am doing something new um, and, and let's embrace it and recognize, Hey, God has something next for us. We're always looking for what he has next for us. Uh, we don't have to stay where we are. Right? right. So I think it's a great opportunity for leaders who, who are kind of <laughs> looking back to maybe say, you know what, burn the ships. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. That's awesome. Hey, if you're just joining us on the broadcast, I just wanted to let you know, this is Jeremiah Hub Online, and we are interviewing two amazing individuals. we got Jeremiah Rebel and we got Karen Burke. Both of them have decades of experience in church ministry, and we're just unpacking maybe what church ministry might look like as we come through this whole experience of a COVID-19. Uh, I'm encouraged by what Jeremiah just said about people um, realizing the need to reach and using technology to make that happen, even though it was out of their comfort zones, but they're able to take the priority of what needs to happen in order to change. And so we are in the trajectory of finding out what really is going to happen to the church as a whole when this whole we come out of this tunnel. It's going to be a very interesting and fascinating. Uh, but if you are liking what you're hearing, Right now, remember, we have a library of videos from different interviews from weeks gone by, and they're up on our GMI Hub online YouTube channel, and we want you to go and check out all the different resources. Basically, it's amazing resources. We have artists, we have business um, our ministry and music, and we have even fundraising, everything. It's all up there. We want you to just take an advantage to go and check them all out and share the experience. Tell people about the GMI Hub and what we're doing. And and I tell you, we can really help uh, those who are starting up or those who are are wondering how to navigate in their music, um, and whether it be um, from recording to production. We, We try our best to try and cover as much as we can. Tonight, we're talking about music ministry in the church, because we believe it's important that as we come through this, this the circumstance that we have, we're encouraged to know God's in control. And we are going to come out of this uh, better and, and stronger, uh, because that is what God has instructed us to do, to help. And DMI Hub is trying to help. We got people like Jeremiah and Karen who are helping in their own way with their 
uh, sphere of influence to do the things that they're doing. So I'm glad you joined us today. Let's get down to in the last 10 minutes that we have. I want to drill down to um, foundation. And the reason I want to do that is because from the time, you know, 2020 turned around, there was a whole bunch of speeches about, you know, vision. 2020 vision and see your vision and move forward and a lot of people took that as oh where do i see the church going and then you know march you know middle of march kicked in and then covid kicked and the world shut down and said oh that she didn't see that coming right so but 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 even with all these changes that we have talked about churches having to embrace the online churches having to um kind of rethink how they're going to do church. Can we talk about the foundation? Can we talk about even though God is doing a new thing, really, how new is it? Jeremiah, do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it, again, you, you just got to go back, you know, if all, if, if church for us, was four songs and an extemporaneous moment in spirit and then, you know, a sermon and then closing song and then a potluck. And, and, and we would tick that off and say, what a great service. Um, we're having, you know, churches doing what it needs to be doing. And it, it's really not, you know, you're not seeing people come to Christ in the life of your church on a consistent basis. You're not seeing um, mature believers uh, actually reproducing other believers, I mean, we, maturity is not tenure. Just because you're old and you've been in the church for 20 years doesn't make you a mature follower. We, we know that maturity, we, we took this in grade seven health class, maturity is reproduction. A teenager is considered mature because they can reproduce. And y'all, we got, you know, people in the church been there for 20 years. And I'm mature because I've been on the board for seven years. You're not mature if you've never reproduced another follower of Christ I would say you're not mature, you're constipated. Because all you do is take in and take in and take in and take in. The old preacher used to say that most people in the church are 5,000 Bible verses overweight. You know, it's reproduction. And so, you know, the church needs to be a decide. We, we exist to help people find and follow Jesus. We don't exist to hear somebody preach. We don't exist to have a, a place where I can sing a song. That's not why we're here. Jesus said, go and make disciples. And so if what we're doing isn't making disciples, well, guess what? We can reevaluate that. And if we're not being obedient, if you go back, you know, you, go, you flip to the end of the book, Revelation, and you'll see the Lord of the church going around and blowing out the candles of disobedient churches. Okay? It's very serious. And if we're not being uh, willing to be obedient to what Christ built his church for. And we're not seeing people come to Christ and we're not discipling them into maturity so that they can introduce other people to Jesus. This is why the, you know, the, 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 the Christianity rate in Canada has been decreasing in the last 50 years. And we're all huddled like the holy huddle, the remnant saying, well, we're still the believers. No, you're not being obedient. You're not doing anything to affect the, the declining Christian influence in Canada. People need to come to Christ. They need to meet Jesus. They need to, they need to have a personal relationship with the one true and living God. Otherwise, they go to hell. If the church doesn't do their job, people go to hell. And I, I would humbly submit, and I'm part of this, so I'm not excusing myself, but the church hasn't been doing our job. And, and we need churches to turn around. We need churches all across this nation to raise their hands and say, we want to turn around. We want to be obedient to what Christ is calling us. We're not, we don't care about how many Bible studies we have or how many books we've written or how many albums we've recorded. If people aren't coming to Christ, then that's a problem. And we want to see, uh, we want to see people meet Jesus. We want to see people connect in with the scriptures and become more like Christ so that they can introduce other people to Jesus. And, and I, yeah, I don't think that's a new thing. I think that's, that's the way it was always intended. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail, which means as the church increases, heaven's postal code increases and hell's postal code decreases. Well, friends, if you look in Canada today, that is not the case. And so why? Is it because God has forgotten about Canada? Is it because the Holy, it's too cold for the Holy Spirit to work? 
No. I, again, would humbly submit that the church has turned its back on, on the nation. And it's not, that, it's not that the Holy Spirit isn't working. He's working because we've seen churches in, in our region turn around. And churches that haven't had people come to Christ in 14 years have seen one, two, three, four, five, six people come to Christ in the last three, four months. We saw a church that we work with said more people had come to Christ in the, in the last eight weeks than in the last 12 years combined. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is working. He's tapping people on the shoulder and he's saying, they're talking about you. And when you preach in English and not Christianese, right? When, when you speak in, in actual English and when you have sermon topics that answer questions from the Bible that people are asking, and when you make the gospel access, accessible and every Sunday or every time you invite people to respond and you give them opportunity to respond to the gospel, guess what? They do. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is working. Because why? Because you're obedient. You're being obedient to what Jesus is asking you to do. So my challenge to churches in Canada today is rise up. Don't accept the status quo of just being stuck and being where you are and preaching to the same 30 people every Sunday. Uh, you have an opportunity to make an incredible difference. So let's rise up and do that. Awesome. Awesome, Amen. Karen. Amen. And I think too, this time is perfect for implementing those things which maybe would have just been courageous thoughts, maybe things that you were timid to try, or you know, maybe with music, doing a different thing in, in your music worship team. And just, if you need an excuse to say, well, you know, it's this time COVID, we're going to try something new and just do it, you know? And people will give you that, that, that space you know, because they know, they think it's temporary, whatever it is. But I, I really love the fact that we, we have got this pivot opportunity and this uh, reimagining opportunity so that we don't, aren't stagnant. You know, I, I, I have a friend of mine as well who, with their choir, um, and they, it's not a church choir, it's a, it's a community choir, um, but they've been, she's been running Alpha as opposed to having choir rehearsals. And they've had four people come to Christ through this time period, which would have taken probably a year, you know, to happen in the normal scheme of things. And so, you know, she was saying, oh, you know, I know people really want to sing. I said, wait a second, four people, <laughs> so, you know? I mean, so yeah, we, there, there are different things that we can be doing to make sure that our mandate is strong, is, is apparent, is woke, you know, so that we can actually see God at work. Um, often the way that we would measure God at work in is not there because we can't see people responding in that same way. But wow, wow are there other other ways to do this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And God has given us every tool that we need. I believe Amazing. that. Now we are we are running out of time, but I really want to give you a chance to, uh, if, if it's possible, if there's something that we've overlooked and you were wanting to speak to today and you haven't had the opportunity to do that. Uh, let me just ask you both, what would be the one thing you would encourage those who are in uh, ministry at the church or music ministry at the church right now? I would say that um, we have an opportunity with the allocation of resources and the different things, uh, options that we have as ministry teams and church leaders to, to rethink how we do things. And so to, to, to be courageous. And to, and to make sure that you, can, you work on things, maybe two that don't even cost any money. For example, one of the things that I, I do, probably year round, but I make sure it's done even this time period, is birthdays. I mean, we've got 55 people in the choir plus a five piece band. And boy, when it comes time to their birthdays, man, we are doing a big hoopla, eh, whatever. Is there a picture, how long they've been, la 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 la. You know, it doesn't cost anything, but it's really important. You know, it's, it's important that people know that you care about them, not just their gift. You care about the whole person. And I think that that is something that we can implement with our churches wide. I'm not necessarily every, everybody's birthday, but certainly if you've got a ministry team and, um, and you, you know, you need ways to, to connect with them more, think about those things that are going to be meaningful for them to understand that we're interested in everything about you, not just your voice, not just your gift. And yeah. if there's one thing that I would say to church, to music leaders, it would be to look for those opportunities to build relationships and create those strong bonds between your, your, your team members. 
Yeah, what I'm hearing there is you're investing in your people. And I think that's, that's very true. Jeremiah. Yeah, I, yeah, I would just say to anybody that's involved in the gospel and music industry is that you are a part of the church. And if you're not, if you're not engaged in the local church, friend, you need to get engaged. You need to find a local church. You need to sign up. You need to commit. You're out there singing for the Lord and playing for the Lord, but you're not engaged in a local church here in Canada. You, you got to do it. You, you've got to get involved. For those who are, who are a part of the church ministry team and maybe you're feeling like, oh boy, m my role has changed or I don't feel like, you know, it's the same as it used to be. Guess what? Your identity is not wrapped up in what you do. Your identity is wrapped up in who Jesus Christ says you are. And so you need to come back to that place of calling. It's not because you can sing a good solo or hit the high bars or do the runs. It's because you are a son or daughter of the most high God. And you got to go back to that original identity. And then once you get secure in that, you got to lean in, lean in to your pastor, lean into your leadership team. And yeah, maybe you're not able to play or sing right like you used to be able to. And so maybe you're going to be an online host, or maybe you're going to be the person that runs the lyrics. Who cares? Because you're not who you, what you do. You're serving God is is not compartmentalized into, well, I just sing alto and I just sing soprano. That's all thrown out, man. Get get in there and lean in to what your local church is doing and help them to get creative. Because you're a creative, because you, you sing and you, you play an instrument or you write or whatever it is, you're a creative. And guess what? The creative commodity in the technological world is incredibly, incredibly important because you're going to come at things differently. You're going to think visually. You're going to think in a different way. And you can actually help uh, your pastor and your leadership team to communicate even more effectively in this broadcast and online medium. So yeah, you're not done, but you may find that you're, you may be shifting. And so go ahead and do that and be confident in, in, in that, that God who has called you has equipped you for such a time as this. It may look different than what it was, but it's just as impactful and absolutely needed for this time. That is awesome. There are now more questions coming up <laughs> just when we're closing, but we want to thank you, Jeremiah and Karen, for taking the time to share your hearts, share your, your thoughts on, on, basically where ministry is at and where it's been and where it's going. And I think the bottom line is we've had to stop. I think the COVID-19 COVID has come. For some people, it seems like it's a curse, but in others, it's a blessing because it's had forced us all to stop and reset, or as we've said, reboot. <laughs> you know, it's given us a chance to basically take the time, forcing ourselves to really look at our look at ourselves, look at our ministries, look at our churches, and rethink what the purpose is. And, and going back to the purpose is not about us. It isn't about us at all. What we've been giving is about for everyone else. It's about giving to everyone else. So mm -hmm. I thank you again, Jeremiah and Karen, for sharing that and, and reaffirming that with us. I also thank all of you for taking the time to watch and listen. And if there are questions, still send them in the chat. We'll get them to Karen and Jeremiah, and they will definitely respond as I speak for them. And, and, um, and you know what? I want you all to have a, a great week. We'll be back next week. Uh, right here. So in the meantime, have a good week. Enjoy the rest of the holiday and we'll see you next time. God bless you.